Hi, in this video we're going to have a little look at this RGB LED controller, but first of all I just wanted to say thanks for the feedback on the Flux comparison video. I think probably what we'll end up doing is a few more videos testing a few different aspects, so there was quite a lot of um, requests for testing with hot air. So I think first of all what we'll do is we'll try reflowing all of these with the hot air gun with the different types of flux to st see how long the flux stays active for. And then in the meantime I'll probably think of a way to test that in a more re representative way of much larger chips. So it may be that I just have to rework the same chip 16 times on a motherboard or something like that which um, may be an option otherwise it's going to be quite expensive and quite difficult to get um, you know, th the size of chips that we would need to test them in the same way as I've done this. And then there are also some comments about um, what happens if you leave the flux on the board and don't clean it very well. So I've got some very old copper clad boards upstairs um, in a box somewhere. So I think I'll divide it into 16 sections and we'll put a blob of flux on each section and then maybe leave it for a month or two and then clean it off and see what it looks like. And we'll do that twice, one just with the raw product and then one after we've heated the whole board up to soldering temperature to simulate uh, the solder having been reflowed um, properly. So that's a, a series of upcoming videos that we'll do on the flux comparison. So I don't think that's the end of that. Uh, and there'll probably be some other videos as well that we'll uh, think of also along the lines of the um, solder comparison video. Also, we're coming up to 10,000 subscribers. So JLC PCB have very kindly offered 10 people um, who leave their username in the comments will get a $10 voucher uh, to order PCBs from JLC PCB from. So if you're interested in participating that, with that offer and you're going to place some order for some PCBs, then if you could leave your JLC PCB username in the comments down below, I'll do a little video where we just pick out uh, 10 winners and we'll send you your voucher and you'll be able to order your PCBs with that voucher. Right, so let's take a look at this LED controller. And I bought these from Banggood. I think I bought about five of them. They're something like £10 each, but I'll put the link down below in the description if you are interested in taking a look. Um, but the reason that I bought these is I've got a couple of lighting projects where these look like they might do the job. Um, so firstly, uh, we've just finished building Camden a little playhouse in the garden and he wants some coloured lights in it. Uh, and having a look at the various types that are available, uh, a lot of them come with those remote controls, but the remote control is just going to get lost. This is a little bit more permanent in that it fits into a standard UK surface box or a flush mount patras, which means that it can be just mounted to the wall and then you've got control of your lights without um, losing anything. So this is really quite a nice form factor. I really like it. And it also gets rid of that sort of DIY look of having potentiometers or something like that. Uh, you know, this is built into something that's quite nice. Uh, the way it works is it's got various um, pointless modes. So there's this mode button that puts it through various flashing things. I don't really get the point in why these controllers always have these because especially with something like this that's going to be fixed to the wall, it's controlling fixed lighting. So when are you ever going to have all of this, um, you know, flashing modes? They're just going to uh, look silly. So um, what I really want to use it for is just the two basic modes is where you can pick the color on the color wheel. So you can pick any color on here, uh, which is really nice, really nice quick user interface. If you want a blue, you can pick somewhere up here. And then if you press the dim um, touch area, you can change the brightness anywhere from 100% all the way down to zero. So really straightforward and really nice. Uh, you can turn it on and off with the center button and you can also turn all the LEDs on uh, to create white, although there's no correction from what I can see for um, you know different intensities of RG and B. But it's pretty good. It seems to do the job. And there's also a few other projects where I might come back and use these uh, LED strips, which I did a couple of videos on uh, back in January. Um, these are DMX output, so what I want to do today is sort of, sort of open one of these up and have a look what's inside, see if there's any signals we can salvage, although I suspect it just goes straight into a microcontroller and feeds some uh, MOSFETs for PWN control. So in order to feed this into something like this, I'll probably need to put these outputs into an input capture compare module on a microchip pick or something like that and determine the PWM value from the amount of time that the output's turned on. So uh, I doubt I'll be able to salvage any signal directly inside, uh, but we'll have a look inside and see what's in here. And what I'm potentially hoping is that I'll be able to integrate this into my lighting controller project, which there will be a video soon. I'm just finishing designing the 
main PCB that's going to hold all of the modules. And I'll probably do a little video on that uh, along with sort of design rules and that kind of thing, uh, just to give a little indication of uh, how you do PCB design. Oh. So interestingly, there are two boards. So um, let's um, take these apart a little bit further and have a look. So this is a little bit more modular than I was expecting. I was half expecting just a pick or something like that with a touch controller built in um, and just driving some PWM outputs directly. But what we've got, first of all on this side, but what we've actually got is this two board construction. So this is the board that sits at the back. Our power comes in here through a reverse protection diode. We drop a little bit of voltage on this little resistor here through this bulk capacitor to store a bit of charge. 5 volt regulator and then we've got another bulk capacitor so that's our power supply section. We've got a Nouveauton microcontroller just here so this is a little 8-bit microcontroller which is just feeding the three MOSFETs directly. Uh, there's actually a position for a fourth MOSFET and a, there's another pin here uh, but that's sort of all this board does and I wouldn't be surprised if this is used in a you know quite a few different uh, different devices because I've got a thermostat um, in the house which has a very similar sort of form factor, similar uh, rear board but obviously the front panel's got a, um, an LCD or something like that on the front so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of this is interchangeable and it looks like we've got sort of a nice squared C interface going off along this flexi cable and then we've also got this little transistor that just, which is uh, switching something that also goes uh, to that front panel. And then what we've got is this touch controller IC on this front board. So this board is bonded to the plastic on the front, so there's no way of separating that out that I can see. Uh, but this is a JG916H, which I did actually manage to find a datasheet for, although it is in Chinese. But in the past when I found a Chinese datasheet, you can use Google to uh, do the majority of the translating, enough to kind of get a flavour for what's going on. But it almost looks like the chip is designed exactly for this kind of purpose. So if I bring up a screenshot of um, a couple of the pages in the datasheet, it does describe how to design a touch panel like this. And if I shine a light through the board, you can actually see uh, the pattern of the uh, capacitive touch, which goes through here. So you get different capacitances and it looks like there's five different segments which it looks at. But as you slide your finger along here, you get a different value. And then you look at this segment and you get a different value again. And basically uh, that forms your touch control there. And then um, there's also a couple of other touch areas. So you can see where these wires go underneath. They go to different regions on the touch panel. But it did look like this chip at the top um, might be doing some translation. But there's no markings on this whatsoever. And I also got the multimeter out and I've been probing between the two chips. And there doesn't appear to be any shared uh, traces on the board other than it's sharing power and ground. Um, and that's it really. So this third pin along here goes to this pin 4 on this IC, which must be some kind of data line. I haven't had a look on the scope to see what it looks like. But that's the only other connection from the other board. And then we've just got a couple of outputs here that go to the three LEDs and nothing else. So there's really not a lot um, that this chip is doing. Seems a little bit surprising, but maybe they're just using a very simple serial protocol just to tell it which LED to turn on. So that is quite interesting because um, what we might be able to do is just design a little board that reads the I squared C signals and makes this into a much more flexible system. Right, so I've just rigged up the Rigol to the board. We've got channel 1 and 2 connected to the I squared C lines and we've got the I squared C decode on the Rigol and then channel 3 in pink is connected to that 8-pin uh, device which just seems to control the three LEDs. So it looks like it's a fairly straightforward protocol. So we've got the colour wheel and if you have a look at the data that comes through you can just see this byte here, uh, depending on where you slide it on the circle, changes anywhere between 0 and 255. So that's pretty straightforward, it just seems to correspond with whereabouts you've touched it on the wheel. Uh, and it does seem to be a fairly straightforward protocol, so um, not too much going on here. And then depending on which of these buttons you press, you can see you just get a different value in that second byte. So if I hold it down, you can see you get 2, 4, 8, 16, 1, and 32. 
and 64 for the power button in the middle. Right, so I've just zoomed in on channel 3 and that's the data line from the main micro to the little 8-pin device and what we've got is a Manchester encoded byte of data which seems to represent the state of the three LEDs. So when you touch anything on the control panel you get the little uh, red LED here flash which just indicates that it's detected uh, you touching the panel and then we've got the two LEDs here so if I press the power button here you can see this LEDs on here and the waveform looks like this and when this LED turns off it returns back to this waveform and then uh, if I press this other button up here you get a very slightly different waveform and again when the LED turns off it returns back to the original waveform so that's a really straightforward little bit of data to send uh, from any microcontroller. It doesn't need a peripheral, you can just send that data out. Uh, which means that actually this should be a fairly straightforward project if I wanted to design a little board to go on the back to send out DMX data to that LED strip. So I'm going to use this exactly as it is for Camden's Playhouse because he's just going to have the RGB LED uh, sticky tapes that just take the PDBram output directly. And again, if we just wanted to send out that data uh, to DMX lights. We could read out the PM, PWM data and just uh, convert that to DMX. But if I do want to integrate this into my lighting project at some point, um, I can just design another board here and send it out um, as DMX data or as RS485 uh, custom protocol. But anyway, I hope you found that video useful. Um, I'll put a link to this down below in the description, but there are various different types on the Banggood website and you can buy them from other places as well. Uh, I assume they all share a very similar uh, touch board uh, and then it's just this one that changes because you can get these in RGB and white versions and then different colours and different form factors and I think you can get one with uh, just a monochrome output if you've only got white LEDs. Um, so there's a fair few different types of these available, uh, but if you are designing your own lighting project or something like that. Um, these could be quite a neat little form factor to have something that looks quite professional on the wall while having your own custom electronics behind it. Um, don't forget to leave in the description your JLC PCB username if you are interested in uh, trying to get your hands on a $10 voucher for JLC PCB. As I said, JLC PCB have provided 10 of those for me to give away to anyone who uh, I pick in the description. So we'll do a random draw in the next video. Uh, but yeah, you leave your usernames down below. Also, any comments and criticisms and suggestions for projects in the future. But until next time, thanks for watching.